That is where I started drawing my map, the Isle of Burke. And as I was drawing it, I drew this wild dragon cliff. And I hadn't even thought of putting the Vikings and the dragons together at that point. But as I drew it, I thought, what if, what if the Vikings really were living in a world full of dragons? That was the starting point for the story. Because real monsters, as I know, do live in the sea. Okay, and I know this because this is my dad here a long time ago when I was a little girl. And that smudgy thing right there may just look like a smudgy thing, but in fact, it's a killer whale. It's a killer whale. And I'm saying, why are they called killer whales? And he says, they're sweet little creatures, very misunderstood. Can we get a bit closer so I can get a really good shot? Real weird creatures, and we would pick up the lobster pots. We were there for a month, so you have to, you know, catch things. We'd pick up the lobster pots. And one time, we were picking up the lobster pot. And picking up a lobster pot is quite a suspense -y thing. It teaches you a lot about suspense, because you don't know what's going to be in it. And we picked up the lobster pot one time, and my dad took it over the side. Great big snake leapt out at my dad with fangs like this. Okay, and he leapt back and said, Get back in the back of the boat. Um, and it was, in fact, this a, a conga eel, yeah, with fangs like this. And it took my dad, when he got it back to the island, half an hour to kill it with a knife. And we ate it. It was delicious. Very good. Um, so real weird things do live in the sea. Real, the truth is always stranger than fiction. Look at this. What is this? This is a fish that looks like a grumpy old man. I couldn't make that up, could I? If there are things like this living in the sea, why can't there be dragons? That's what I started thinking. Why not? Why not dragons? So I started thinking about dragons, and I started thinking, well, what would they really look like? You know, they, there's always these storybook dragons. They always look the same, don't they? Like green things. And I thought, no, I'm going to do lots of research into different types of creatures and put them together. Remember, telling a really good lie. Yeah? I'm going to do lots of looking at planet Earth and all these kind of things and put real creatures together so that you think they really might exist. Like develop a whole... That was my, my tiny aim. Develop a whole dragon evolution. Hooray. Yeah. <laughs> and make it feel real. OK, so here is a mood dragon, one of my favourite dragons that belongs to the girl hero in the story who's called Kamikaze. Great sword fighter. Fantastic, fantastic heroine. And she has a mood dragon about so big called Stormfly, which is a mixture of a chameleon and a mood stone. <laughs> So it changes colour according to its mood, which I always think is great. And you can always tell when she's lying because she turns purple. <laughs> OK. But you can see the conger eel in that and basking sharks. OK. We met basking sharks from here to here on the island. Very sweet creatures, according to my dad. Vegetarian. Yeah, vegetarian, he said. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, would it know you were... A vegetable, if you're just here, I would say, when I was <laughs> swimming in the harbour. Okay, I mixed that, the basking shark, okay, and had it, um, mixed it with one of those sea creatures, you know, which have a light on the end of its nose. And in this book, oh, oh yes, uh, oh, hang on, this one. Oh, no, How to Break a Dragon's Heart. This one. And this one, okay, which is about a tree prison. I have it drifting through the treetops. It's a... It's a giant bee-eating dragon with a light that attracts bees into its mouth, yeah? Okay. Um, and it's a mixture of that and a, a, a basking shark. DreamWorks, okay, who now make the movies of the... You see, they can make these amazing... That's one of, the, one of the many reasons I love them. They can make these amazing dragons. You know, they... They, 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 again, you can see how they've looked into Chinese dragons and sea creatures to build these huge, great big dragons that really look, that looks like it might exist, doesn't it? It's a lie that looks real. Okay, next slide. Yes. So at the beginning, 
of How to Train Your Dragon, the first book in the series, uh, I have Hiccup here sitting at the bottom of a cliff. Okay, this is the beginning of the first How to Train Your Dragon book. And this is a real cliff on the island. It looks like a face. Isn't that extraordinary? I used to lie at the bottom of that cliff, just here, looking up at that face. And I would imagine, what if you could climb up that cliff? And this really happens to hick up at the beginning of How to Train Your Dragon. And in the right eye of that cliff, there was a cave. And what if you could climb up to that cave and climb down it? And in the cave, there were thousands of sleeping baby dragons. Wow. And what if Hiccup had to climb down and steal one to use as his hunting dragon, yeah, without any of the dragons waking up? And that was what happened at the beginning of How to Train Your Dragon. And he's supposed to steal a really big, scary one, an Alsatian-type one. Uh, <coughs> called a monstrous nightmare. But in fact, what he steals is one about so big. <laughs> really cute, toothless, so naughty. This dragon is very, very naughty, very cute dragon called Toothless, who is sort of, who's very, very naughty dragon. Basically, when he puts it on his, his arm like this and he tells him to fly away, he just sticks there with his claws in. He says, fly away. No. He's very, very naughty. And he's sort of based on my cat, Lily, <laughs> uh, and my children when they're about two. Because uh, talking, uh, And you can see in this next picture oh, how you can see the cat-like, how it, in the film they made Toothless much bigger because they wanted you to be able to ride him. Uh, but you can still see the cat-like influence. They're doing the same thing in the movie, aren't they? They're trying to make something that's not real come alive in your head. And that's a bit, they do it. I do it with words. And they do it with looking at things very carefully. How do cats move? And so the toothless in the movie is a sort of mixture of a, of a bird, the way that birds fly. They look at that very carefully. People who are making up lies look at things very carefully. Look at the way the birds fly and the cats move. And they make it a mixture. And that's what you have flying through the sky. You have... Toothless, who still got, I think, my toothless's kind of cuteness and naughtiness, okay? Oh, yes, that's my riding dragon. He's sort of a mixture of my riding dragon, who appears, the wind walker, who appears in the sixth book, um, and, and the little hunting dragon. That's the dragon furious. Isn't he beautiful? That's the dragon that's organising the rebellion, with Hiccup there on the wind walker. 